Let's talk water parameters. Hey, it's Carlin Haywood from Rasta Reefs, a company that is dedicated to helping individuals and businesses get the most enjoyment possible out of their aquariums. If you're new to the channel, each week I share best practices to help you achieve success in the saltwater aquarium hobby. Let's dive into the topic of this video, which is aquarium water parameters. Before I really get into the meat of this content, I just wanted to stress one thing first. Stability is key within your aquarium. This will make a little bit more sense as we progress throughout the video, but except for maybe one parameter, which is ammonia, you don't have to be exact with any of these water parameter values. Instead, aim for a certain range, and then your water system will be just fine. So there's this saying in the aquarium hobby, and I'm paraphrasing a bit here, but it goes something like this, that people who are keeping aquariums aren't really keeping fish, but are keeping water. And that seems a little backwards, but when you really think about it, it makes a lot of sense. Because the path to a successful aquarium is through consistent and stable water chemistry. But if you don't know what those values are, then you really have no chance at success. First and foremost, let's talk ammonia. I like to start here because any presence of ammonia makes an aquarium unsafe for fish. Ammonia is very toxic, so it is important that you fully suckle your aquarium before placing any fish into the tank. I won't go into the aquarium cycle too much in this video, but just know there is a process called the nitrogen cycle that converts ammonia to safer byproducts that are called nitrites and nitrates. I'll touch on nitrates more later in this video, but the value of ammonia should read 0, 0.0 parts per million. No ifs, ands, or buts. I will be doing a full breakdown of the aquarium cycle in a later upload, so make sure to subscribe to be notified when I upload that video. Okay, so now on to temperature. So in the previous example, we talked about ammonia. So there was no gray area there at all. Um, it has to be zero parts per million. But with temperature, there's a, an acceptable range between 76 to 79 degrees. And I personally shoot for 78 degrees. Um, that gives me a little bit of a wiggle room just in case there's a one or two degree rise or drop. And I like to run double heaters um, that way if one fails, the other can maintain the aquarium temperature while I get a replacement. Let's talk a little bit about salinity. So salinity is defined as the concentration of salt within water. Basically a test of how salty is that water. So there's an acceptable range of salinity for a salt water aquarium, which is 1.023 to 1.026 specific gravity. I personally like to run my systems on the higher end of that range. So about 1.025 or 1.026. Um, one thing you want to keep in mind when you're trying to maintain a certain salinity is that you have to keep in mind evaporation occurs um, in saltwater aquariums. And so when the water gets evaporated out, only the water leaves and, and no salt actually leaves the system. So what you'll start to experience is a gradual increase in your salinity levels if you're not replacing that water that is evaporated. But make sure that you're replacing the water with fresh water and not salt water. Because if you replace it with salt water, you're just going to run into that same issue of just a gradual, continual gradual increase of your salinity levels. Moving on to nitrates. And so we had discussed earlier that ammonia gets broken down into a much safer byproduct in the form of nitrates during the nitrogen cycle. So although not inherently dangerous to fish at lower levels, if you allow that concentration of nitrates to rise, it too can become dangerous to fish. And so for fish only systems, you want to aim for about 20 to 30 parts per million. And for systems that contain corals, you want to aim for about 5 to 10 parts per million. And so I'll just touch briefly on one way that you can reduce your nitrate levels. There's a few options, but um, for me, I like to just do water changes to reduce my levels. And if you need help um, doing water changes, I'll link to two of my previous videos to help you through the process. Although very important, um, this next parameter gets overlooked quite a bit, um, and that, that parameter is pH levels. And so the ideal pH is around 8.3, um, but as I had stressed earlier in the video, uh, you don't really want to chase after um, an 8.3 number. So if your system is thriving at around 8.0 to 8.1, um, don't stress yourself out, um, you'll be just fine. So now we're really starting to get into the parameters that matter 
if you're trying to keep corals. First up is alkalinity, which is a measure of the water's ability to resist changes in pH. There's a great presentation by Brightwell Aquatic CEO Jack Kent who describes the alkalinity as the strength of a particular pH, meaning the alkalinity levels in a tank determines how stable your pH will be. I personally like to keep my alkalinity around 8.5 dKH. We already talked about the importance of a steady pH, so making sure your alkalinity stays consistent is of double importance. That information paired with the fact that alkalinity depletes faster than calcium and magnesium, which I'll touch on shortly, is why alkalinity is considered the most important parameter when keeping corals. Next, we'll talk about the major element of calcium. Certain categories of corals like LPS and SPS uptake calcium to build their skeletal base. The calcium value I like to stay around is 430 parts per million. Low calcium can inhibit growth of corals, but at too high of levels, it will lead to an imbalance in your aquarium and cause alkalinity to decrease. And as we discussed earlier, if your alkalinity drops too low, that will eventually lead to your pH being less stable. As you can see, pH, alkalinity, and calcium all work together to remain in harmony within your system. The element we'll talk about now helps promote the stability of that partnership, and that major element is magnesium. Without maintaining adequate levels of magnesium, which I like to keep around 1300 to 1400 parts per million, it becomes very difficult to maintain the stability of your alkalinity and calcium levels. Keeping it simple, the presence of magnesium allows alkalinity and calcium to be present at higher levels without the two mixing and crystallizing. Last but not least, I'll cover phosphates in an aquarium. Phosphates will rise due to events such as uneaten fish food or fish waste breaking down. Ideally, phosphates should be in a 10 to 1 ratio with your nitrates. So earlier I said good nitrate levels are around 5 to 10 parts per million in a reef tank, so phosphate level should be about 0.05 parts per million to 0.1 parts per million. When phosphate levels gets too high, the water contains excessive nutrients and you run the risk of growing unwanted algae on surfaces in your aquarium. If you've enjoyed this video, consider hitting the like button to help support the page. And if you'd like to be notified every time I upload new content, hit the bell notification and subscribe button as well. And as always, keep doing your research. The legend Bob Marley says, it is better to know than to believe. See you next time.